a real pleasure to be here. Um, you know, Blythe, Blythe is my wife right here. She just reminded me that uh, the last time I was here, it was quite a few years ago, uh, when Christine Ferreis was running this, and we had a show in the space here. And I, when I came here, I didn't realize the, bu the building. And it was a, a, quite a while ago, but it was a fantastic experience. You know, this is, um, as was mentioned in the, in the, in the intro, um, I started um, Morphosis and simultaneously it was part of starting a school of architecture 50 years ago. And it's, um, it's, it's allowing me to just think about the nature of kind of where I am at the moment and what I'm interested in and where I'm headed, et cetera. And um, I, I took the, the conversation of, um, of architects, not architecture, um, I got light right on my eye where we're from. Um, mm, I, I'm not totally in agreement. I would be, it would be architects and architecture, or they're more kind of singular. And um, what I'm going to try to do is to, to, to explain in a very personal way uh, the nature of uh, the derivation, as far as I can it, it can talk about it, in terms of the uh, the influences of the work. But they're going to be quite different than what we just talked about, and that it's not going to start with family, and that it was going to be kind of neutral. When I started. Um, I have to say, um, I'm very conscious of being an American architect on multiple levels, culturally, politically, socially, etc. And, um, and, and it'd be a, a separate conversation. Um, but it's, it's one that starts with somewhat um, an isolated kind of place. You're starting from some neutral kind of territory. And um, I'm going I'm to start with discussing the four broad territories that um, I became interested in very early that were my major kind of influences <clears throat> and that became much clearer over the first decade, let's say. And it, it is going to start with um, the nature of um, kind of making things and a very kind of basic notion of, of materiality and construction, et cetera. And it's going to be um, very much connected to the early part of my practice and um, that has to do with the um, um, the, the role of, of, the, of the concretizing ideas in, 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 into their, their formal construct. And then the education for me in the early, the, in the early late, late 60s um, was very much at a time when there was a um, kind of an ending of broad modernist ideas and it was, it was somewhat exasperated the project. And, and they were asking questions, and again, everything that started my career started with um, various phenomena taking place in the 60s and 70s, which had to do with resistance. It had to do with um, asking very primary questions, um, and somewhat uninterested in historical models. So it's interesting, I'm mean, looking at the projects you're showing, and I was, um, Believe it or not, I'm coming out of undergraduate school with very little knowledge of a Corbusier or a Mies. That's how radical it was, right? You did not look at the past, and it was very much interested in, in um, analysis, synthesis, it's in a much more kind of scientific, let's say, kind of, kind of thinking. But then one, one thing that did stay with me was that I had one kind of particular professor that was interested in um, landform. And we were visiting Chaco Canyon and very kind of these primitive sites in, in, in the southwestern United States. And then with that came um, a series of uh, in investigations that came out of the art world where um, painters were leaving their studios in New York and buying bulldozers and digging and carving. And it's the Smithsons and the Heisers and the Terrells. And it had just instinctively, I was extremely kind of interested in this in this set of activities. And then, well, the, the kind of the history that was coming actually it started happening after my education. Um, clearly, there were certain notions that I was aware of coming from Southern California, with the Neuters and Schindlers. And um, if you're interested in history, the Lovell House was built um, a year before Villa Savoy. Right? And I'm in a very unusual environment. And in fact, I have many of these as my professors in my fifth year. But we were in a mood where we were resisting it. We were not interested in it. We were challenging it. So it was a really kind of an odd thing that 20 years later, I started understanding the nature of these characters. And I became more interested in what they were and what they did, et cetera. And then with that, 
the various aspirations that were taking place in the early part of the 20th centuries that was leading us to um, potential and to the, uh, the notion of architecture as an art form. Mm. I should say that um, it'd be a big discussion we have later. Uh, it, the, it somehow, I, I, I somehow took it for granted early on um, my interests were with the culture of architecture as an art form. And I connected it to one of the art forms as whether I'm looking at, at, at music or cinema or, or, or the plastic arts. I'm very much interested in, in, in that culture. And I'm understanding with that, or I'm taking for granted a certain type of autonomy. And I'm understanding that it's um, my interest has to do with an autonomy, which later on is going to be kind of shifted, as I'll talk about in a few minutes. And then, and then with that came certain first resistances against um, a certain simplicity of the northern European modernism that came out of um, Mies and, 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 and uh, the, 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 uh, the, the kind of singular thinking that came with a certain kind of minimalist idea. And my instincts had to do with something much more complex that were going to be later influenced by Venturi and, and complexity and contradiction. I would say probably as a single text, that was the, the most influential of my generation that kind of opened up new possibilities. And then I'm, um, I'm drawing. Hmm, ooh, he's not going to move. Ooh, dear. <laughs> it means I have no dynamic stuff here. I'm, 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 um, I'm looking for a voice. And I'm, um, I'm operating in visual, in visual terms. And um, I'm going to spend some time, um, a huge amount of my time, exploring the potential of the work through um, its conceptual possibilities. And I'm looking for organizational ideas. And I'm interested in um, an idea of uh, multiple forces and of um, variant contingent matter that finds its way into the work, all challenging Hilbert's hybrid, and again, challenging the kind of simplicity that, I, that was, I was observing in a certain kind of work. And it's going to go move from conceptual work to something much more connected to uh, like tectonic or construction aspects or the, the notion of architecture in a much more conventional sense. And then the first work, and again, um, I'm speaking especially to many of the younger people here that are just starting a practice. I'm um, 28 years old, and I'm starting Morphosis, and I'm, I'm, I'm part of starting the school. And um, th there, there are very few clients, or there are very few people interested in the work I'm doing. And I'm already becoming aware of the, um, the radicality of the autonomy of architecture vis-a-vis -vis client. And it began, maybe we have a discussion later if we get together, because I had no interest in clients whatsoever. I was interested in, 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 in finding uh, the nature of what architecture was and making a definition of, in terms of my generation, kind of what, how I was going to contribute to architecture. And I was asking question is, what is architecture within this, this time in history? Kind of how do I participate that as a young person, and how do I define or, or advance the notion of what architecture is? And I'm searching for a voice. And a lot of it's going to come out of very small-scale work that has to do with something that's realizable. And I'm very much investigated in, um, especially now being uh, 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 starting in Los Angeles and starting in the US, of the limits of construction and the simplicity and the very kind of banality that's taking place around me. And we're taking responsibility for the, the making of the things that we're inventing. And, and taking responsibility for our own um, creative capital. And that's going to be starting to influence a conceptual thinking in that it's, um, the work is going to be very much about certain levels of intensification. And we're interested in the, um, the documentation of our thinking, of our idea as it comes through the hand, as it comes through the making process. And it's that intensification is um, going to have to do with fragments of work versus the work. And it's going to all come out of work that's kind of available to us at a smaller scale. That's going to be typical for a young architect. And again, um, a particular way of starting a practice, um, young, naive, optimistic, et cetera, that, that, that something that has no kind of reality. If, I, if 
20 years from now, I'm going to talk about it in a very different way, right? But it's just the things that are kind of possible at the time. But trying to, to, to completely kind of have ownership of those things, so I'm not sure where that little dot came through. And it's going to start affecting the drawing, the, the conceptualization through the, the, um, the conceiving, through drawings and model making, et cetera, and the work is going to get closer together. And um, certain things are now going to happen. And as I'm looking back now, I'm kind of startled by how many of the basic things that I'm still interested in, the basic conceptual structure is still exists. <clears throat> and at this point, I was very involved in, in um, the relationship of fragments and of the unfinished and of multiple systems that make up one thing that came out of this beginning of the smaller work. <clears throat> and it's, it's, it's going to start affecting the whole notion of part whole. And at this point, I'm looking at Palladio and I'm understanding that I'm, ch I'm challenging a very basic kind of tenet of a very a notion that most people would agree upon, the relationship of, of part whole and what, what constitutes um, coherency. And I'm interested more and more in this notion of kind of looking at developing new notions of coherency. And, and I'm not sure it's my generation or it's me personally. Um, and again, it's interesting when you go back to back with people. I wasn't looking at work and copying the work or mimicking the work. I had no interest in that whatsoever. I was interested in the ideas behind the work and looking for something. So I, I wasn't influenced by that. I was influenced by the kind of the thinking. And, and, and I'm drawing, hugely influenced by people like Sterling, and I could rattle off numbers of people that, that, um, that, that the drawing was so vital to their thinking. Right, because drawing is thinking visually, right? And I was interested in um, the intelligence of objects and is it interested in the, in the intelligence of, of thinking visually at that time. And I'm now starting to mesh our interest in landscape and it's going back to, to uh, the double negative, et cetera, and construction and the, the occupation of site and landscape is taking much more of a role. And now there's a whole series of projects which is going to start having to do with the, um, the primary nature of nature vis-a-vis -vis building and the notion of challenging the simplicity of a building on landscape. But the two are doing this. They're merging, right? And, and landscape is taking a dominant role. And architecture is just about secondary as an, as an operation that, that defines the process. And that's leading to larger scale work. And again, as a small practice that's working on um, limited projects, let's say, in terms of their engagement, certainly at, at a level of scale or their importance with more complex issues, we're working on competitions. And those competitions are now becoming, um, they're, they're, they're starting to form us in terms of a, of, of a, a future direction. And, and then what's happening at the same time, um, uh, Working in Los Angeles is, at this particular moment is extremely kind of important. If there was any kind of major influence in my life looking back, I'm realizing it was very indirect and in that um, I'm living in Venice and my neighbors are um, Ruche and Terrell and a lot of these characters were having their first major shows there and they're just young people that nobody knew. And it's affecting kind of how you think and it's definitely opening you up to huge kind of potentials in terms of the options that you have. And, and then with that, LA is becoming a, um, mm, uh, the Archigram boys took over UCLA. It's where my name came from. It came directly from, from Archigram and the notion of collective practice. And Morphosis came directly from my, my first meeting with Peter Cook and Ron Heron, et cetera. And, um, People are trying to show up there, both because of the art scene and because there's a group of people that are experimenting that period of time. And I'm meeting people, and again, it's going to happen to you as a young architect. Your, the, your, the, your colleagues are starting to have a huge effect on you, and, and a huge amount of these people are teaching. And you're, you're starting to bump heads with people on a regular basis, and Zaha's showing up, and Wolf Fricks is showing up, et cetera, et cetera. And it's having a huge effect on how you think because your, your academic work and your practicing work are getting closer and closer together to the point where um, probably my first 10 years of practice, huge amount of the people in my office were my students or they're students of these other people I'm meeting or other institutions that I'm on juries, and they're, 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 it, it's, it's this. And then there's a whole series of projects that are gonna happen at, at the 20-year point 
so I've spent 20 years kind of investigating kind of ideas of trying to find kind of a place in architecture and finding a um, locating that within both the language of the work and the um, what the, uh, the the breadth of the issues you're dealing with that have to do with those the, the, those projects, and and then after that's going to come a series of projects and your um, first project at school in, in Los Angeles, um, getting a little bit lucky. The drawing on the complete left, I actually showed the client. The first thing they saw was a, that piece of thing that looked like a landscape, and I actually kind of made it through that. And things are changing now. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm moving personally from um, kind of this position that's honoring the autonomy. And I have basically a, a kind of a fuck you notion towards the world and towards the, the nature of what's around me. And I'm working within my own, my own sphere. And I see architecture as this autonomous place. And I'm well aware that there's very few people that are interested in this. This is something that you talk with your colleagues, and it's a private conversation. And it'd be no different if I was a poet or a painter or a, making a good cinema, et cetera. Nothing unusual. But as I'm now interested, because I, um, behind it all, I'm still interested in agency, and I actually want to, um, the aspect of modernism that's still with me is an engagement which has the ability of shaping behavior. And I'm still young enough and naive enough to believe that architecture can shape behavior, that it, it has huge potential in political, social, cultural terms. And as I get this project, I'm now in that, in that place that I'm building something that has clear kind of a, a relationship to, to society and, and, and potential change. And then with that now is coming a series of work. And my first kind of large work is in Austria. And it's now shaping me in a, yet another way. And I'm working in Europe and architects. I'm being treated in a completely different way. Um, being an architect in the States is really tough. You're, 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 you're on your own. And you're very isolated. And it's not a place that has any cultural understanding of architecture. And you're, it's going to be, um, you're going to be uh, Muhammad Ali. You're going to be in the ring to, to develop your your, your standard and you're going to fight for your, your issues that are political and social, but you're going to be in the ring and you're going to have to fight it out, right? And it's, it's a, tough, a tough profession. And um, as the work gets larger, things are changing hugely and I'm developing a studio. It's becoming, um, it's becoming the morphosis that I said it was going to be 20 years earlier and then it's a collective and it's going to have a broad set of issues now that have to do with uh, the relationship of uh, the complexity of architecture as an art form that touches so many areas that I was touching in the beginning between its, its, uh, its, 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 its role culturally, conceptually, politically, et cetera. <clears throat> and, um, and then I'm also becoming aware that a client shows up from Seoul, Korea for a little office building, and we get this building that's about a skin, and it's going to be just about kind of a surface. And I'm starting to realize the... Um, the limited control you have, that be maybe something we can trust. It's really odd as your one part of you is absolutely uh, focused towards controlling who you are or the best you can of kind of focusing, right? And the other part is ad hoc. The phone rings, right? And I've never had any ability to develop it at a, at a, uh, a political level, right? People have to just be interested in what you're doing enough or you have to make some connection with the world where the phone rings. And we're starting to do work. And now there's a kind of a, 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 a whole series of things that are taking place, right, that have to do with um, work that's operating at a political level or at an institutional level. And there are courthouses, and they're starting to become extremely kind of complex and very, very interesting projects. So I'm doing a courthouse, and we're spending a year arguing absolutely, hugely political left-right issues of the nature of the, of the Constitution and the role of the, the judicial branch of the government, and it's becoming a completely different thing, which is broadening the notion. And at this time, I'll remember that we were being very criticized as um, being fetish, overly fetishistic, kind of formal, et cetera, et cetera. And it was a, it was a negative, right? It was an attack on us, and um, overly kind of interested in complexity. And now a lot of that's useful to us that the, we needed more complex projects. We needed uh, the, the work that had both the scale and, the, and the, uh, the, the various operational complexities that were more in tune with our um, 
our thinking. And at the same time, we're, um, we're drawing, we're, we're, we're still working at a conceptual level, but I can somehow separate kind of our work that has to do with our own interests formally and conceptually and the work that's connected to the project in more normative terms. <clears throat> and it's developing the, um, the nature of the work over this period of time. And it's international, right? And then it'd be maybe another broader discussion. I think today it'd be pretty hard to have an office that's, that's local, that you pretty much just about have to work internationally today having to do with the reality of, of the capital system and the, the nature of the, 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 the flows of, of the economic ups and downs, et cetera. And the work is, um, through this period, really expanding the kind of questions we ask. Right, and that the, the, the diversity of the types of projects, the locations, the, 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 where it's taking in terms of material languages, et cetera, et cetera, is forcing us now to, to, to kind of expand kind of our thinking. And then the scale is now reaching the early competitions. And it's, as I look back now, I'm realizing, oh, it was um, actually 30 years ago, I'm working on those competitions that were establishing basic ideas that have to do with an urban organizational notion that's showing up um, last year, right? They were just completing this piece of work, and um, which now represents some um, fragments of cities, and it's the thing I've been fascinated for in the literally from the beginning that I was interested in, in architecture that operates urbanistically and has a, a role at that level. And I also see it as a, um, as a weakness in the profession. And one of the broader notions of looking at organizational ideas is, is finding a gap, the, filling a gap um, of, um, I, I think that our profession as a whole has limited organizational notions that can accommodate, that, that can accommodate the complexity of city making. And well, I can't show much of this. This is the, this is a, a, the largest project we've done. This is a, a kilometer long. It's the, um, the new embassy, U.S. Embassy in Beirut. And then, ah, um, getting kind of bored with a certain direction organizationally and looking for kind of a new place to go. And uh, the computer, of course, that'd be 93. Um, it is going to completely change the possibility of the complexity of the organizations we can deal with, right? And um, it's, going to, it's going to be a, a, an enormous kind of shift on our work. And I'm going to go back now and spend time on much more conceptual thinking of looking at organizational ideas and looking at very particular notions of controlling chance behavior. And it's, again, it would have been a long lecture, it would be another long talk. But all of these are looking for a complexity that has to do with, with chance behavior that produce a, a certain level of complexity that's parallel to the history of city making, right? And it'd be the anti-Palladio, right? The absolute reverse. And, um, and I'm looking at the, um, we're now working in three dimension. And as we started with the computer, I, I realized that the, the drawing ended as the early organizational ideas of making architecture. There was no longer a planned section as the beginning. The planned section now was a response to the 3D thing, and it's closer to a CAT scan. It's the way a, 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 a cardiac surgeon would use it, right? And then there's a direct connection now between these organizational ideas and their formation into the work that developed this. Oof. And I'm now connecting our interest in landscape architecture and organizational ideas, which are much more connected to a, a they're anti-Cartesian. They're much more connected to a, 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 a thinking of evolutionary biology in terms of their, 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 um, their origin. And then with that comes uh, an openness and an infrastructure-like nature of the work itself as it connects to, to the landscape. And then mm, it's, it's moving again. And I've got, whoops, I didn't want that one. Um, oh, it's supposed to move. Oh, shoot. Um, these are supposed to change. There's 100 in each one of these. And I'm now looking at the potential of the, the options you can look at. And it's just enormous. The shift is taking place. Um, you're used to, uh, well, I'm old school if you drew. 
you look at five or six options. I now look at 100 at a time, <clears throat> and it's a complete different world. And it's, oh, it's a shame those are supposed to move. Um, a, a competition we won for a park in, 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 in Beijing, and I'm making direct use of these organizational ideas and the production of, of landscape and building as a cultural park that's taking me here. But I'm looking at now at infinite um, variations of a particular idea, right? And this I'm extremely kind of interested in that I'm working at the moment. And I can look at now various ideas and I can produce a language where I can control the, um, the DNA, let's say, right? And I can look at um, um, literally infinite numbers of, of options. And I, my own sense is this is going to have a huge effect on the future of architects. If I was one of you that's under 25 years old, I would really, really be thinking about the nature of the future of this passion because I can now do this with one person. Right? And my whole notion is to turn my office into 100 people, I'm going to turn it into 15. And the 15 will get paid three times the amount of money, by the way. They'll get a real salary. Right? And um, uh, it's going to be much more intimate. It's not AI taking over the world. It actually produces an intimacy between a much smaller team that you're working with very personally, and it's just using the, the, um, the tools that we have available to us today. And finally, they're going to, ooh, this is what's the trend, it's really a shame. Uh, and they're going to have to do with city making. There's a competition we want in China for an element of, a, of a, an expansion of Shenzhen. And then as a, um, an addendum, you want me to be done, right? I'm done. As an addendum, two addendums. Um, I'm now spending more time um, working on um, digital paintings using this idea, which are definitely still connected to organizational ideas which are, are, are going to be connected to architecture. But I'm interested in, um, I'm not producing these. I'm producing the brain that produces the drawing. And I'm controlling the DNA matter as I can control different directions. And I'm controlling the system of how this makes this. And you're looking at one of these things, and it's one of infinity. And infinity is a big number. All right? and, um, I've been really, really fascinated now, and I'm interested in the nature of beauty, the nature of aesthetics, and I'm looking for something that's acultural. I'm still connected to broad notions of nature and the relationship of the formation of nature that it has to do with um, a, a con consistent behavior at a, at, a, at a molecular level, et cetera, and again, I can feed in this information and I can produce these things, and I'm having conversations with friends of mine that are painters and I'm saying, I just produced this thing, and it, I'm asking questions, is my, is myself in this? It, is my hand, they used to say hand, it's not hand, it's whatever, you're, right? It, is my thinking, my personal thinking, finding its way through this, because I'm not touched this. It's being produced mechanically, right? And, and these are terrible images, they actually are three-dimensional, and they have, they have kind of an essence of physicality. And then I had, and again, I can do this, and they're my sketches now, right? And I can make literally hundreds of them, and I can now evaluate and talk about the nature of these things. And then I have one last one. Since I didn't talk about family, like you're really, I did have a family. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, a, I had a, a brother I was very close to, and we spent time on the farm, but you don't want to know that. It's, it's, this is, it's, I have to say, one final, I find it some, I was thinking of when I talked to you, you, you wanted something much more personal. And we, we live in an age where um, it seems like everybody wants to have 150,000 close friends. And I have a hard time keeping six. And, and if you want the close stuff, uh, you, you've got to know us. <laughs> it's a different session. Thank you so much. You go Perfect. <laughs> um, thank you a lot. Um, I know it's very challenging to, to talk without talk to do this kind of lectures without talking about projects which are part of, of the life. Especially you mentioned one of the projects that is now ready, but it's something a concept of twenty years ago, correct? Uh, yeah. In Milan. Yeah. Um, if I got if I, if I have to keep the interview short, what do you consider the most challenging moment of your career so far? Oh uh, boy. It's um, is it layers? Um, I mean, it has me. You have had very different 
decades of I, I, I think that um, of work. It's funny you asked somebody what they would recommend, and I want to go backwards. It's funny, I think architecture, when well, these lights are running around, so it's something I want to look at you and I can't see you. The, um, the, uh, yeah, if you could turn this down, it'd be really great. Because I really want to see yeah, you. It's really nice to talk to people. I can see writer? you. Yeah, yeah, they would make the, it. Um, it's funny, I think architecture is a profession that might be similar to any of the art forms that there's no advice to give. It's so connected to the specifics of you as a human character, right? That you have to figure it out. And, um, if you have to have any general characteristics today, you have to be alert. You have to be able to observe and, 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 and somehow personalize and internalize those things and connect them to your particular craft. And it's not a profession. If we have a conversation, it's multiple. It's a kind of an absurd. Um, we're a little bit behind. Architecture is like a general medical practice would be in the what, 19th century, a doctor, right? Architecture is still in the 19th century that way. There's no such thing. It'd be absurd that you're an architect, right? That it's, it's multiple professions. If you talk to an um, electrocardiac surgeon, that's where the modern world is, right? He's, he's already th four, four pieces past being a, a general doctor. And then so, so it'd be impossible to give kind of a prof advice, even depending on kind of where you want to go, because we could have stopped in those first kind of territories and it could be technological. Ah, the drawings I'm just showing you, I'm working with a, a Caltech MIT math type. He speaks in tongues. I have no clue what he's talking. It's just mathematical stuff, and we find ways of communicating very closely because we're talking about very personal things as he's dialing in stuff, and I'm kind of slightly understanding the nature of, of the scripting mm -hmm. and of the programs he's developing, but I'm interested in the effect. Kind of, I'm, it's a tool. Right, and I, for me, it's no different than picking up a handsaw and a drill. I'm just picking up a tool and it's useful to me, right? And um, so anyway, the advice thing, I'm looking at this huge group of people. If there's 100 people here, there'd be 100 different, <laughs> 200 different directions, right? Based on what your particular interest is. And it's, it's getting more diverse. And I think the, um, with that comes, I think a critique of, of the university today. I think the, the education is at a tough moment right now that it's, um, it's a bit behind the profession even, technologically, and some of it is just very complicated, it's just economic. Um, we have four Z-Corp machines in our office that, that work day and night making models, right? Z-Corp, the automated, right? And um, you, need, you, you, you need technology today that, 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 that doesn't exist within the economics of education, et cetera. <clears throat> and it's also, um, it's moved so quickly. Again, I'm looking at mostly very young people here. Um, architecture changed in 1993. The computer absolutely changed architecture. Right? And I'm not a computer guy. I'm an old school guy. But I recognized immediately that the future of architecture had only could move in that direction. And that, again, in my interest in integrative systems, it's an integrative tool. So the thing that a computer can do, oh, and it will, it'll go to the drawings, um, it can operate integratively past your own capacity mentally, no matter what your IQ is. Uh, what Kiesel says, you can deal with seven things simultaneously, and that's probably pretty close. We go to the next step now, the drawings I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> we asked a question the other day, we were looking at one of the drawings going, this is interesting, we've just surpassed a drawing in terms of its quality that probably all but one out of 10,000 people could ever do. But I'm, I'm using AI and an intelligence, intelligence, an ability to deal with complex matter and integrate it that's beyond the human capacity. And, 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 and I, that's where we are today, and it's going to have a huge effect on architecture without any question, because that's all we do. We, write, we, we integrate highly complex um, information and it's 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 getting more complex as the scale increases, and the scale increases because the economic aggregate is increasing in terms of our capital, etc. And so it's going to be more and more common that you come out of school very quickly and you're going to work on very large scale work that automatically has that level of complexity that requires that kind of thinking, right? And if you're if you're, you're if you're still operating in kind of a very simple level, you're not really even capable of dealing with the problem. Or if you've been thinking about organizational ideas that are synchronized with the types of problems you're given, 
And again, I would go back to, um, you could be an evolutionary biologist, or you could be a surgeon, and they have, they have to have, uh, there's a compatibility between technique, not only technique, but in our case, conceptual thinking, and technique with the type of problem they're trying to solve that allows us to, to, um, to, to, to hmm, that advances the, the discipline enormously. If I, maybe just one question before we pass to the roundtable discussion, I know it's very hard. Um, and it's also, it could be uh, with a very long answer, but let's try to keep it uh, short. <laughs> I know, I know, it's challenging. <laughs> I, I acknowledge what Blythe said, something regarding that. Keep it short, Tom, keep it short. Or what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but regarding um, big projects mean, mean also big responsibilities. And the, you have mentioned part of your talk uh, some criticism that you had uh, at some part of your career that well, because the projects are yeah, a big scale or uh, are also a big um, um, have a big meaning for the cities. I would love to ask you about um, how do you deal with criticism and especially up with projects that I had in mind, the project in Switzerland, the Stada Tower that had some right. strong criticism, and even the one in Saudi Arabia with uh, La Linea. How right. do you deal with, uh, with critical voices? Well, like anybody, you... Um, <laughs> uh, well, first of all, you, you want intelligent criticism, and it's necessary. And mm. I would get it. I think it's something that's also... In kind of, we're in a, uh, uh, an in-between stage at the moment that we need really good criticism. But we have a kind of a, a lower level, in my mind, criticism today is a little bit too simplistic, that's not useful to us, et cetera. Um, uh, look, uh, I'm gonna answer your first question at the same time I ask you this question. One of the things that is definitely difficult if, if you're very much involved in the, the culture of architecture, which is um, autonomous, I'm gonna say, and connected, and, and connected to your earlier question, as I was moving from my love of architecture that's, that was autonomous into larger scale work, I had to get interested in the reality of mm. how the world understands architecture. And that might be, the, for me personally, the biggest, the biggest leap and the most difficult one because I wasn't meant to do that, basically. I'm not interested in that social stuff at all. I'm a private printer person and I really don't care what a client thinks. I honestly, I'm just being honest. I, I, but. I had to learn to understand that if I was interested in this, I'm now responsible uh, as an architect for the, um, the reality of the project as the world understands it. And that change absolutely had to take place before I could show you the kind of work I'm doing, before, certainly before I'm doing an embassy or a courthouse, right? And um, I'm, I'm now able to think at two different planes and I'm much more aware that if I'm gonna speak about our private world of architecture in formal terms, I'm in this group. I have a group of people that are interested in understanding that. With anybody else, I have to understand the nature of their project and in, in their terms. And now I have to come to some sort of an agreement. And then with the critique, um, architecture is a, um, it's filled with contamination. It's filled with contingency and it's politically wrought. It's not a pure, um, you're gonna go on the ring. Um, it's closer to playing basketball. If you want to win, sometimes you do this and do this, and you just do what you have to do to win. And it's not clean, and it's not pure. And uh, I have no notion of that, that I've made mistakes or may, you make issues with things. And the things you're talking about, the, 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 bu the building in, 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 uh, in Switzerland was the best possible solution. It was a great solution, and it had nothing to do with, uh, I wish you had more time. We presented the site. In, in the valley of, of Tours, yeah, yeah, right. it's, a, it's a 11th, 11th or 9th century town of seven, 700 people. Uh, and we did various games, well, the, the competition did, and we did this one little thin <coughs> tower. When we presented it in New York, we knew, especially the, the Europeans came to, to kill us, and they were all gonna to, to, to write something terrible that's the largest, the tallest building in Europe. We built the site, and the site in this room would go up, and it'd go up about halfway to the ceiling, and we put the building in it, it was this big. We said, no. Yes, in London, in Rotterdam, yes. Now it'd be, a, it'd be a different conversation to build a thin tower at whatever that thing was, 500 or 600 meters, whatever. And um, in this site, it was minuscule and it was much closer to an art installation. And we made this little reflective tower and that's the model we showed. They couldn't say a word. 
Ah, and that comes with another kind of notion of the growth of a firm. At some point, you become strategic. And that happened with me through the, we didn't talk about it here through the Now Institute, as we're doing urban work, which is another whole conversation we haven't talked Maybe about. Maybe we can take the conversation right. yeah. for the roundtable discussion. But, no, no, if you do the urban work, you become, you become, uh, uh, you, you move from conceptual to, you can, un, you work in a political thing and you, and, and you, you operate in, in a very, very different kind of mode. And again, part of it, I guess, being an architect is you have to kind of move left to right in a nanosecond. And if, that, if there was any, if, am I looking as a teacher now, if there was something I'm looking at students, I think to be a, um, a, a successful architect, to, or to, to, to be useful, you have to have the ability to move left and right, and it, it, it's, it's, it's this. You're shaking your head, right? It, it can't be left, right and left is gonna take you in two very different directions, and one you're never gonna build, and the other one you're gonna, you're gonna construct, but you're not gonna be interested in the culture of architecture. Thank you, Tom. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you, Tom, for the talk and for the interview.